everyone and welcome back. I am Shannon, I am the Wisdom Wench and today I thought I would give you a tour of my mini home apothecary. This is the equipment and all the things that I use to make medicine at home for me and my family. I'm going to give you a little overview of where we started and how I got here and where I want to go. Today's tea is a mix of marigold, nettle and lime flowers, also known as linden. With the nature of herbal medicine, a lot of my equipment is also stuff that I use in my kitchen. It's not all here, but I keep a good chunk of it here. I've got my tools, I've got some menstruums I use, and then we'll go over each shelf of my mini home apothecary. So, let's start with the tools. I've got some scales, standard. For scales, it's useful to, to weigh your herbal medicines, especially if you wanna make bigger amounts of them. I've got some sieves for straining herbal medicines. I've got two that are bigger, but I also use them for food, so they live in my kitchen. I've got stainless steel bowls. Stainless steel is, oh, I've got another little mini one. Stainless steel is one of the, if not the easiest thing to disinfect. So if you're making things for other people, not just yourself, it's really handy to have things that can be disinfected quickly and easily. I've got measuring cups as well. I really like using measuring cups when I'm making medicine. You'll see me use these in my uh, making a hay fever tea video. I've got a coffee grinder. So with some medicines, you wanna powder the herbs and you can use pestle and mortar. It takes a lot of time. It is quicker to just use a mechanical coffee grinder. I've got one again, stainless steel, easy to disinfect. So that is, that is just some of my tools. I've also got uh, muslin cloths, also known as cheese cloths, that I, um, they're currently in the wash, I've used them recently, but they're reusable, easy to disinfect and the like. And then other tools include things, just spoons, knives. Again, I use them for cooking because they live in my kitchen. Menstruums. So when I'm learning to make herbal medicine, the menstruum is what the herb is mixed with when I'm making things like a tincture or an oil. I've only got a couple here that I'm learning with and playing with. My first one is vodka. Very, very standard. Again, you saw me use this in my cleavers video last week. Make sure you've checked that one out. I've got a brandy. A lot of herbal medicines have been traditionally steeped in lots of different things. Brandies, uh, white wines, gins. I like brandy, so I've got that and I will be making some things with this one soon. Apple cider vinegar is one of the things I've seen as an alternative to an alcoholic option for a tincture. You can also use things like glycerites, but I've not used them before and I don't feel like I know enough about them to be able to use them. And then an oil for making herbal oils. Um, I've just got a basic olive oil. I like olive oil. I keep it simple. So there's some of the bits and these again, they don't normally live here. They live in my kitchen or in a cupboard. So let's go to our herbal cart. So I went with a cart because I like that it's movable, it's on wheels. For me, I needed to make making herbal medicine as accessible as possible. I also work um, among studying and doing a lot of other things. Creating things in such a way that I didn't need to run around, grab a herb and carry it to the kitchen, or in order to clean it, take off all of the herbs to clean down the shelf. This is the easiest, most accessible thing for me to use given my lifestyle, because I can just roll this into the kitchen. Or when I wanna clean my space, I can roll it into the hallway. It just makes it a lot easier for me to continue making herbal medicine. So we will start with the bottom shelf. There isn't too much of an order with this, but on my bottom shelf, I've got some refills. I've got my dandelion leaf refill, and I've also got two herbs that I'm using currently on my course and learning about, and that is yarrow and thyme. I bought all of these from my local health food shop. I wanna support local as much as I can, especially as I don't have the time, I don't have the space to grow all of these herbs. 
being able to support a local business in that rather than ordering online is something that means a lot to me. I want this health food shop to stay in business and I want it to succeed. So buying from them is a way to do that. Sterilizing tablets in here as well. These are really good for sterilizing jars and sterilizing equipment. They are something that I might move away from in the future just because they are in plastic and they're not the best thing for the environment. But again, for me, it was making, making medicine accessible and removing the barriers. As I'm getting more comfortable and it's not becoming so much as a chore as it was at the beginning to sterilize everything, I will probably move away from them and start using other things. Overspill herbs, because this is full. <laughs> um, I've got lime blossoms down here, which is in my tea today, also known as linden. When I was told to get lime blossoms for my course, I had no idea what they meant and I thought about the fruit. I think a lot of people did. Um, I didn't know they meant linden and I'd always known it by linden, linden tree. So I've got lime blossom. I've got lavender. I know it's a divisive herb. I love the smell of it, hate the taste of it. So I don't mind it in an oil or something. I won't tend to put it in a tea for me just because it is hit and miss for the taste and I don't like the taste of lavender. And on the note of jars, you'll be able to hear that these, this is a plastic jar. This is a glass jar. The choice between jars is completely up to you. I have some plastic jars because when I started getting my herbs, I ordered some jars online, didn't look at them, didn't read the description properly, they're plastic jars. I've got no problem with these, I'm gonna keep them. There are times where plastic jars might work better for you if you've got a lot of really young children or you've got a lot of pets and you're worried about glass breakages. Plastic jars might be for you. I, have, I haven't got an issue with plastic as a whole, as a concept. My issue is with single-use plastics. So I will use these for the rest of time until they, di until they die or I can't use them and then I'll probably find a use for them again for something else. So I haven't got a problem with these. They're also quite light. I can put them in a bag if I want to take them places as well. So we've got plastic jars. My glass jars, I've slowly been getting from things like charity shops, TK Maxx as well. I like the mix and match look of all my jars. It makes me very happy. I love the aesthetic. It's very me. <laughs> but I get as many from charity shops and secondhand shops as I can. Because all you have to do is sterilize them and then they've got a whole new lease of life. So I've got these under here. I've also got some little clean empty jars. These have all been sterilized inside as well. But they're also really good for a good size for things like spices that are already ground up. And now we can move on to our second shelf. I love this shelf. This shelf brings me joy because it's nothing but herbs. I love it. So let's, let's just start. I've got cinnamon here. A really, really good spice to use for herbal medicine, but as I've mentioned in my previous videos, I'm a pagan, so I will incorporate some of these herbs into my pagan practice as well. Cinnamon is really good for abundance spells, so for wealth, health. I, I use cinnamon in a lot of money spells, but I don't like the taste of cinnamon. I'm one of those people. I hate it. I really don't like how it tastes. I hate cinnamon rolls or anything where it's like a really big main ingredient. No, can't stand it. I don't mind it when it's kind of an accompanying spice. So I will use it in a tea amongst other spices or kind of broken into chips or you can powder it and mix it with other things that way. I've got marshmallow root, one of the things I've just started working with. I love marshmallow root. It's a really soft herb. It smells really good. You can use it in a lot of things like, like cough medicines. It's that really smooth kind of coating feel of a herb. So when you're taking it, you can really feel it kind of going down your throat. So it's really good for stuff like that and sore throats. Hibiscus. This is an old coffee jar that I cleaned out and sterilized and I have used on hibiscus. Hibiscus is actually quite bitter, but I really like the bitterness in it. It's a very floral bitterness. It's got a lot of um, good properties. It's used a lot in kind of issues around menstruation and hormones as well lovely lovely herb it's also a nice thing to just flavor your teas with so that's why i keep that around dandelion leaf i've just refilled this because i emptied it and you can see like i've prepared for my next refill it's a beautiful herb i think because i'm doing it for my as my final project herb as well i'm using a lot of it and 
I've formed quite a relationship with this herb and I really love using it. It's become one of my favourites. I've really developed a relationship with this herb. Elderflowers, I am running out of this. Elderflower is lovely and light and floral and beautiful. Tastes really good, has a lot of good properties. You really can't beat elderflower. You can also make this into bitters for things like alcohols with a medicinal twist to them, which is fantastic. Chamomile, I need to refill this soon as well. I think I've got just maybe a third of a jar left. I love chamomile, I use it a lot. You've seen me use it a lot if you've watched my previous videos. It's in my hay fever tea, but it's, it's a beautiful herb. It's a lovely tying together herb. It's a very soft herb, it's gorgeous. We have chamomile, peppermint, great for that kind of opening sinusy kind of feel. It's also a lovely tasting herb. Spearmint, peppermint's older, older sister, I feel. I love spearmint as, just for its flavour, but I find it stronger than peppermint. And a little bit sweeter. So if I want to make a tea that is going to taste quite sweet, I will use spearmint over peppermint. Marigold. Marigold flowers, which are in this tea right here along with nettle and linden. Mm. That is a good tea. A lovely herb, a very light herb. It's very good for wound healing, for promoting healing after surgery and things like that. It's a gentle herb and it doesn't interact with much of anything. So it's quite a safe herb for most people. Nettle. I love nettle. This jar was full. I've used it a lot. It's beautiful for things like hay fever and anti-inflammatory conditions. I use a lot of nettle. It's the base to most of the things that I make. I Not only does it taste, it tastes nice, but it's also a fairly neutral taste. Like it can be enhanced with herbs. It can be overshadowed by herbs. So it's just a general really nice base to work with. It's safe for a lot of people. Hawthorn leaves, one of the ones for my course at the moment that I'm learning about, tastes really lovely. Um, I've worked with the berries before, but not the leaves. This was new and I'm, I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it. I'm still learning about it, but I like it. We've got lemon balm here, a good alternative to chamomile if you want the calming feeling, but you don't want something that's going to make you really sleepy. So lemon balm. A meadow sweet like lemon balm's best friend. They go together really well. They taste so good together. Whereas this has a sweetness to it. This has a light floweriness to it that kind of balances each other out. You can mix these two together with pretty much any other herb to make a really lovely base for a tea. And they've got a lovely, a lot of lovely medicinal properties. So that is, that's, that's a fun shelf just full of herbs. And I can guarantee you that slowly, over time, all of these shelves are just going to be herbs. And then I'm going to have to find different places for everything. I also don't really have a system for how this goes back. It just goes back where it fits. There are herbs. I know where to find them. That's kind of, that's kind of my whole philosophy. They're in one place. I can find them. Perfect. That's what we want. And then I always have to do a rejiggle because I never put it back in quite the same way. And I'm like, how did I make this all fit? How did I do this before? Oh no. Okay, well I don't know how to do that. So marshmallow roots going to the bottom shelf. And then finally we have our top shelf. Top shelf, I have things, I have some extra herbs, some extra spices and things that I want to grab pretty quickly. I've got my label maker. All of these little black labels were labeled with this. I love, I love using this. It's something, because I can also wash the jars, like hand wash the jars, the outside of them without this coming off. The, like, that is a plus of it. The downside is if I ever want to change the jar I'm using for the thing, I have to take it off and then it becomes a pain. So I think in time, I'm going to use up the refills that I've got for this. And then in time, I'm probably going to move away from it and find a less plastic alternative. But again, when I started all this, it was things to make it as accessible for me as possible. 
I've got some of the, some more tools, but more used tools. So I've got my teapot with my strainer in it here as well for when I'm making larger batches of a tea. Also, if I'm making a tea that I want to cool so I can have it as like a, a drink to sip throughout the day, brewing it in something like that. Cafetiers. Cafetiers are perfect for when you are straining medicines. So if you're if I make a tincture, I can put a whole tincture in here and really press it down and get as much of the liquid out as possible. I can do the same with oils, with vinegars. It's a really easy thing to use and to clean. I've also got muslin cloths that normally live in here but are in the wash. They're also another way to strain medicines. I've got valerian root up here. I like the taste, I hate the smell. Um, it's basically the opposite of a lavender for me. This is a really good herb for sleep. Whereas chamomile, it's a very, very mild sedative, will just calm you down to send you off to sleep. This will send you off to sleep. This is a type of thing where I might ground it up, mix it with some other herbs, maybe like a dandelion coffee. I put it in here if I want to sleep. I can powder it and use that. I've got my hay fever tea that you saw me make in a previous video. If you haven't watched that, go have a look and I talk about blending and coming up with the herbs and how I make it. I've got dandelion coffee here. So dandelion coffee is just roasted dandelion root. It hasn't got any caffeine in it. I have dandelion root right here. Like I had dandelion root for my course, but before I knew that you could roast it and make a coffee, I bought this. If you want kind of like a herbal boost, you can mix it with a coffee that is caffeinated. So you don't get as much of the flavor, but you do get the help of dandelion as a herb. Again, bought from my local health food shop because I want to support them. I've got raspberry leaf tea here, a herb that I've bought really recently and I really want to start working with. It's really good for things like cramping, hormones. It's used a lot in menstruation issues and issues of the like, of the womb. And I want to start working with that. So we have this up here. I've got fennel seeds. Fennel seeds are a lovely herb to have in a tea. You can powder them and use them in different types of medicines. I will be making, using this, an electuary pretty soon that you'll, you'll all get to see. And if you saw my last video where we dried out some cleavers, we got the cleavers here. I have a few more that I need to dry out and I will, I promise, I'm gonna harvest them from my garden soon and I will dry them all out so that hopefully this jar will be nice and full. And then notebooks. I have a lot more notebooks. I also have a lot of books of herbalism and if you'd like to see a book tour, let me know and I'll make a video on it. These are the main notebooks that I'm currently using. All of my actual herbal study is in a big folder because I write on paper. So this one is for all of my, this is purely for library books that I borrow and making notes on them so that I can give them back, but know that I've got all the information still. This one, if you saw one of my previous videos, you've seen this. This is where I draw up and paint the herbs and then learn a little bit about them in my garden also doing things like kind of a herbal profile on each herb about its taste and its actions, how it feels. And it's nice to add a little bit of creative aspect to my study, which I really enjoy. And something I've just started is this. I bought some flashcards on a ring in town. I think this is from Wilkinson's and I got it on sale for 50p. And what I'm gonna start doing is writing up a profile for every herb on here that I can just grab from the top. It's gonna have the Latin name and the common name. So the first one will be Matricaria recutita and it will have a common name. It will have a bit about the herbal uses of the plant. And then it will also have a lot about the taste and flavor profile of a plant. So anyone could grab this and be like, I wanna put something that tastes like this with something that tastes like this. I can use that to kind of decide what I'm gonna make. So let's get, whoop. Let's get all of this back on the shelf. Oh, I've also got a small pack that again, I got from my health food shop of a mixed forest fruits kind of tea. It is just mixed like dried fruits and it's really nice little flavoring thing. I've got a small pack of it and I will just kind of put a teaspoon of this in with whatever tea I'm making and if I, if I want more of a fruity thing. So that is my mini home apothecary. I started this home apothecary with, I think maybe two herbs and a tea strainer. I have a lot of tea strainers. 
But I started really, really small with a book, a notebook, a tea strainer and a tea. And that was it. Over the last eight months, I've built this up. I got a small amount of herbs for my course and then I moved to getting equipment that I could easily sterilise. I moved to getting more things that I can use to make medicines. This didn't happen overnight. This is months and months of slow accumulation and little bits of investment of both money and time. And I'm really happy with it and where it's going and I love it. I love looking at it. It makes me, it brings me a lot of joy. It's probably gonna end up with like just covered in herbs, honestly, it will. Cause I keep getting more, <laughs> just keep getting more. Where I want to go with is, uh, my vision is very specific. Has anyone watched Grimm? Rosalie's Spice Shop in Grimm. That is my dream. It's really specific, but I love like aesthetic wise, I love that. It just makes me happy to look at. And it's again, accessible for me. Like when I'm stressed, when I'm tired, I can just wheel this around to wherever I need it to be to make. That was kind of the most important thing for me when I'm starting learning about herbalism, because I do a lot of other things. When I started studying it in earnest, because beforehand it was watching some YouTube videos, which are really, really good, really like insightful, or reading books or learning about herb or identifying herbs. It was really small and I was kind of dabbling, something I'm really interested in, but dabbling. And when I decided, no, this is, this is what we're gonna do. And I dove in, I needed to, I needed to, to fit in with my life as a whole. And this is how I made it fit. And I love it. it, it brings me so much joy. And anyone that comes in and sees it gives me a lot of compliments and just, just sparks joy. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here with me today and coming along. Do you have a home apothecary? How did it start? Are you looking to start one? What will be your first herb? Please let me know in the comments. I love the little community that we're building here and the discussions that we have. It's fantastic. Please like, comment. I really want to hear from you and subscribe if you'd like to see more of this. Please share this with anyone who wants to start herbalism but is only seeing those big, beautiful, honestly gorgeous apothecaries online and knows they can start small and they can build up really slowly. Also anyone who's just, you think might be interested in learning about some herbs. And I will see you in the next video. Goodbye for now everyone. Believe it or not, this is the second time I'm recording this whole video because my last one just stopped and I don't know why, but I kept going. So I'm, we're doing this again, okay. So by the nature of herbal net, very easy to use. It also helps, oh, I've just turned them on. No, turn off, turn off. It won't open. Ugh. Oh God, we're about to run out of battery. It's on orange. That's not good. That's not good. Ooh. So that is, oh, ah, you're falling, you're falling.